On today's show, we're going to take a look at this little pocket-sized Sokani light, which is going to look mightily familiar to many of you. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at YouTube.com slash Photo Joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you didn't know that, at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, we are live right here. This show is live. It's recorded live, which means if you are in the live chat room, you can participate in the chat. You can ask questions. You can hopefully get answers. Sometimes I make up answers. It's always you know either educational or entertaining. That's the two things that I can promise. Okay, maybe entertaining to stretch, but we try. We do try. We try to educate. We try to have a little bit of fun on here. We try to talk about fun gear that comes my way. Now, a week, two, three weeks, four, some time ago, sometime recently, I'll link to it right up here, I did a kind of first look review-ish thing of this little Aputure light. That's Aputure, A-P-U-T-U-R-E, Aputure light. The Amaran, was it? A-L-M-9. This little guy loved it. This thing is so cool. It's a really nice, tiny little pocket size, super bright little LED light. A USB rechargeable. This thing, well, it comes with a little pouchy like this. You can drop it in. It comes with some color gels and other things in there. And off you go. It's a great little light. You can mount it on your camera. You can, um, you can, you know, put on a light stand or whatever. Whatever. It's a light. It's a cool, cute little pocket-sized portable light. Nice. And then shortly after that review, a company called Sokani reached out to me and said, "Hey, do you want to do a video about our light?" I said, "Sure, why not?" So they sent it out, and um, it's remarkable how similar things are. I mean, theirs is red, the other one's not. Um, very similar looking. We're gonna do some direct comparisons here, but it's a very, very similar setup. Magnetic, front magnetic attachments for the, uh, for the diffusion panels. It's like a, it's a, it's a knockoff. Let's just, let's call it what it is. It's a knockoff. But to their credit, they have tried to up it a level. They've tried to take it up a level. In some areas, they've succeeded. In some, not so much. So before we go anything else, let's take a look at the price side by side because that is obviously a major point. The Aperture Light is $45. The Sokani one is $49. So we'll call it the same. $4 difference, whoop de doo We'll call it the same price. So they are comparably priced. So that's good, right? So all right, so we're off on the, on the right start there. When I first got this, pulled this light out, first impression, it has a really nice build quantity, the Sokani one. It's metal. Can you hear that? It's metal as opposed to plastic, which does mean it's heavier. And we're going to actually look and see how much heavier it is. Um, it is a heavier light, but it has a really nice feel to it. Now, let's take a look at the close-up here. You can see it's got this, uh, you know, nicely screwed in. It's, it's, the edges are nicely smooth and it's kind of, you know, not, I'm not going to say it's like an Apple product type good, but it is, it has a very nice build feel to it. So that's great. You know, we like good quality products, so it feels like it's going to last for a while. So that's great. Um, it has, interestingly, let's do a little top down here. It has more LED lights than the aperture. So that's the aperture and that's the Sokani. And we're going to talk more about the LED lights themselves, but there are more in here. So there's nine on this and that's three by, I think it's seven. Yeah, so 21 on this one. So you have more LEDs there. Kind of curious. The, it comes with the same type of deals for the covers. You got a magnetic cover diffuser for both of these. Um, the, this is kind of interesting. The, I don't know why that would be. The aperture one has holes in it. I don't know if it's there's no lights behind it, so it's not losing any diffusion. I don't know if it's a cooling thing or what. Just interesting. Um, the diffusion panel on this one is solid. And then this one, the Sokani actually comes with a color temperature orange, a CTO magnetic diffusion panel, which I'll say the Aperture one did it. It comes with a color gel that you can put in between. It comes with an orange and a blue one, but it doesn't have a separate plastic uh, diffusion panel. So, uh, you know, if anything, I would call that kind of a win for the Sokani. That's kind of nice. Okay, so we've got, got those two things there. So size, bigger, heavier. Let's take a look at the weight. Let's actually do that. It's kind of fun. I actually brought out a little scale here so we could do a side-by-side. -side. Let's turn that thing on. We're going to, we're going to, this is in grams. If you want to know what ounces, you can do the conversion. So we're going to start with the Aperture one. Weighs in at a whopping 62.4 grams. And in the right corner, we have 101.5. Is that right? I thought it was heavier than that. Put that on there again. 101.5, there you go. So it is most definitely a bit heavier. As I said, it's made of metal as opposed to all plastic. So there's you know pros and cons to that, right? The metal one, it feels stronger. Um, I'm not about to do any drop tests on these because I do quite like them, but uh, I would imagine this one's a little bit tougher. But being heavier, if you are doing something where every single gram matters, if you're packing for a, um, well, I guess you wouldn't really take these on like a backpacking trip, would you? Because once you ran out of batteries, you have to have a way to charge them, but whatever. If weight matters, this one is heavier and this one's lighter. So, you know, that's something to consider. Okay, so you've got 
um, you got these things, they both come with a little pouch, they both come with some type of stand to hold it onto this, so you can mount it onto your cold shoe, uh, mount it on the hot shoe on your camera, you can mount it onto a light stand, whatever. So they've all, they both got all those accessories. Um, another plus for the Sakani is it comes with, look at all these pretty gels, it comes with all of these, which is really nice. There's a lot, um, I think 15, a lot of different colors in there, so I, I quite like that. And that's definitely one of those, like, you know, it probably cost them pennies more to include this, and you look at the aperture one, you think, you guys could do that. You know, you could definitely include some more gels in there. That wouldn't, that wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't hurt the bottom line too much. So I like that. That's pretty good. So let's get to the part that's really important. Which one is brighter and which one lasts longer? That's kind of important. So when I first fired these up, let me, let me turn this on and see if you have the same reaction. Oh, same reaction I did before that. Sorry, I forgot about this. We need to look at the, let's do this as an overhead view. The LED panel on the back of the Zucani, this is really nice. So when I turn it on, press and hold to turn this on, it boots up, it says Zucani, and then it shows a brightness level, 100% brightness, and it shows a battery level charge. Let's, let's do a close up here, you can see that a little more clearly. The battery is about half charge right now. And you'll notice the light's not on yet. So I have powered it on by pushing and holding, I just push it again to turn it on, and now it's on. And so to change the brightness, just like on the uh, aperture, you have little plus and down buttons up here. So I'll hit the down button, and as I just touch it, you see it goes in 1% increments. If I press and hold it, it'll go in 10% chunks. So that's cool. I like the LED. I really like that. So you see your brightness level, and more importantly, you see your battery level. The battery level is really critical. Brightness level is convenient if you, let's say you're setting something up and you go, okay, this is the perfect setup when it's at 43% and you want to recreate that, that's handy. But otherwise, you know, just knowing, I guess, that you're kind of halfway there is kind of handy. Um, I wouldn't call seeing the brightness percentage a critical feature. It's a nice to have. But having the battery level on there, that is definitely good. On the aperture light, you have, let's go back to this, you have your on and off switch. Uh, you have a, uh, let's get this in focus here. On off switch, you have a plus and minus to change the brightness, but there is no digital readout. So the only LED light that's on here is hidden somewhere. I forget, it's somewhere in here. It comes on when you're charging it. Um, and that's basically it. So, you know, it's a status light for charging, that's it. You don't know when it's getting low on battery until it kind of goes out. So, so that's, you know, that's a win for this economy. But now let's get into the really important stuff, shall we? Um, by the way, if you're wondering, the, um, the, the his comments about my scale on here, you guys, you guys gotta get your minds out of the gutter. Um, questions, if you have questions, put them into the live chat. We will bring these up afterwards. We'll do a little quick little Q&A afterwards, but I see the, uh, I see what you guys are talking about over there. Gosh, coffee, it's the scales from my coffee. <sighs> anyway, so when I first turned, when I first turned this thing on, um, I thought, you know, this light is not as bright. Let me, let me do this, let's do the overhead. And let's see, and you're not gonna be able to see this on the camera, you really aren't. But I turn this thing on and I crank this one up all the way. Let's get this all the way up to 100. And so now we know, there it is, now it's at 100. And I crank this one on and I turn this guy on and cranked it up all the way. And, and so that you don't really know when it's at 100 until you know, it just stops getting brighter. And I thought, ooh, looking at these, I don't, yeah, you probably can't tell there, but looking at these to me, the aperture absolutely seems brighter. There is, like, in my mind, there's no question. The aperture is brighter. But here's how funny these little fickle things can be. Remember how I pointed out that the aperture has fewer LEDs? It turns out that these fewer LEDs, they are actually larger. They're probably twice the real estate of the, uh, the little ones on the Sakani. But these individual LEDs are significantly brighter to the point where these two lights put out a virtually identical amount of light. I went into a totally dark room. I put the camera on manual aperture, manual um, shutter speed, and auto ISO, and just turned each light on, pointed the camera to gray card, turned each light on, put it in the exact same position, and they both set the exact same ISO, which I thought was quite interesting. Okay, so it feels brighter because these little intense dots are brighter. Each one of those is brighter, but there's 21 on here, nine on here, do the math. Um, it come, turns out that they are actually putting out the same output. Okay, so now we're neck and neck, so this is pretty good. So now, how long do they last? That is gonna be the really interesting part. So I set these up last night. It was a very exciting uh, time lapse. I set these up, turned them on, set up a camera to take a picture every minute, and uh, put up a clock next to it and walked away. Now, one of the competitive advantages that Sokani says they do is something in their electronics, a manage to keep this at full brightness until it goes off. 
So you're going to have 100% brightness or whatever your brightness is set to, but consistent brightness until the very end, and then it's going to go off. They told me that the aperture light doesn't do that, and so that it will get dimmer and dimmer as time goes on. Interesting. Very good point, right? Good to know. So that was part of this test as well. What happened? Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull up my Lightroom catalog that has these pictures in it, which is going to be a very exciting time lapse to see. I'm telling you right now, this is compelling footage here. Okay, so I started the test at 7 p.m. You see both lights. The They are, again, as I said, same brightness. Let's not comment on the fact that I failed to focus on the screen up there. We don't need to know, worry about that. And I go through and I take a picture every minute. So there's 10 minutes in, 16 minutes in, and 25 minutes in, and neither of them have changed yet. 33 minutes in, and 39 minutes in, we're still good. And there's 44 minutes in. Okay, 44 minutes. Are you ready? And then here we go, 45. Boom. That bigger one, the one on the left, that one, of course, is the Sokani. So the Sokani went out, we're going to call it at 44 minutes. So somewhere between 44 and 45, we're going to call it at 44. And if I go back through these, you will see, as Sokani said, true to their word, the light does not change value. So I'm flipping through these pictures. That light does not change value, at least not in any perceptible way here. So that's great. So true to the form, as they said. Okay, now let's keep on going. So there's, there's the point where it switched off. So there was 45 minutes was the first one off. And then we keep going. And the aperture's still on, and the aperture's still on, and the aperture's still on, the aperture's still on. And at this point, if you look closely, you can see it start to dim a little bit. So 15, we're good. 16, 17, 18. Ooh, look at that. Can you see that difference between 18 and 19? Dimmed slightly. Slightly dim, slightly dim, slightly dim, slightly dim. Now, now it's significant, and then off. So essentially, over the last six minutes of its life, it dimmed but only the last six minutes of its life. The total time on this, what was it? Well, here we go. Uh, what did I say, seven? I, I wrote them down so that I didn't have to look it up earlier. The total time, the Sokani gave us 44 minutes at full brightness and then just died. The Aperture gave us an hour and 17 minutes or 77 minutes total. It went dim at an hour and 23 minutes or 83 minutes. So at 83 minutes, it started to dim. So it was just the, sorry, swap those. 77 minutes, it started to dim. 83 minutes, it went out. So the last six minutes, it was fading out. That's it. So you had 77 minutes, almost double, nearly double. So now, ooh, now it's, that's a tough one, right? So at this point, when you're comparing the two, you're going, well, bigger and heavier, possibly stronger. Comes with all these color gels, very convenient, but let's face it, a couple of bucks at the uh, thrift store and you can have all these too. Same accessories, same cases. Do like the fact that you get two solid covers, magnetic covers for the Sokani light, but not a, really a big deal. The fact that the battery lasts almost half of what this one does, my, money, my money's on the Aperture one. My money's on the Aperture one for this one. So there you go. I was, I was getting close. I was at the end, and before I did that test, I'm going, ooh, I kind of, mm, you know, mm, kind of like the build on this one. That might be it. But given the most important part of it, how long the battery lasts, that goes to this. Plus a little bonus information here. Once they were both dead, so I came in this morning, obviously they're both dead because they've been on all night running a little time lapse. When I plugged both of them into USB, the Aperture light came on instantly, instantly. The moment I plugged it in, the light was back on to full brightness. The Sokani took several minutes before it would actually power up. So right there, you've got a situation where if you want to be using this in a studio environment and you don't want to be working on battery power, you just want to plug this into the wall, you can do that. I mean, you could do that with both of these, plug them into the wall, but if you weren't plugged into the wall, this one dies, then you plug it in or plug it into a battery pack, you know that it's going to come on instantly. This one is not. So as much as I like this light, it is a very nice light. Um, the Aperture is going to win on this one. So. Don't usually do comparisons here, but I thought this was, uh, this was a good opportunity to do them because they are so, so similarly identical. So there you go. So if you decide to buy either of these lights, needless to say, there is a link down below. I would most certainly appreciate you using my affiliate link down below. That would be very nice. And speaking of that sort of thing, if you find value in this show or any other show, we would most certainly appreciate if you were able to head over to photojustice.com slash support and consider supporting the show in any one of the number of ways that we have there for you to do that. Also, hey, Anybody want to come to India? We're going to India in January and February of next year. PhotoJoseph.com slash India. It's a big India workshop. It's going to be all kinds of fun. And that is somewhere I would love to see some of you joining us on for that photography workshop. Okay, I see a couple of questions coming by, so we are going to jump into a Q&A. We will be right back for that. <laughs> 